going on? Welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Today, I've got a review update for you. I'm taking a look at PEP Hands Off. Now, those of you that have been following my channel probably remember when I did my review of the parking email premonition about a year ago. Now, this is an update to that, which is going to be included for all existing subscribers of PEP as well as any new subscribers to PEP. Now I'm just gonna briefly touch on like PEP because I did do a full review on it about a year ago. So I would urge you to check that out. And then I'm gonna go over what PEP hands off is, this new update, as well as show you guys a live performance of it and just try to answer those questions that you guys have about it. So if you don't remember from my last review or you've never heard of PEP, this is a way of performing a prediction, premonition, or confabulation type routine through email with your spectators. So you can perform this one-on-one -on -one for a small group or even two or 300 people if that's what you wanna do, where you're sending an email out to one or 10 people. They can confirm that they got the email and then you can have somebody think of something or you can have more than one person think of something and then later you can prove that you influenced them, that you knew what they were gonna think of because they can open up that email and see that you predicted it long before they even thought of it. That is what the parking email premonition is um, and it is a standalone item but it is also integrated with Inject. For those of you that have Inject, and as I said, you can go back and see my original review, but the most important thing you understand is it is already integrated with Inject because Tom Parkin integrates it for you. And so Inject is not just an input method, but you can actually perform all of your Inject effects through PEP. So now they're being sent as an email to your spectator as a prediction as well um, and so that is what's really great about it and that is really what PEP is um, and there's been several other like small updates along the way I'm going to just mention some of those but some of the really strong reasons why you should consider this system is because of the the attention to the detail that Tom Parkin has put to this the amazing customer service that you're going to get and just the personalization because you can have this personalized to whatever effect that you want to perform. And shortly I'm gonna show you guys one of the inject effects that was created like on the user group and which has been incorporated into PEP. So now I can perform like a Harry Potter type of effect anytime I want to. And for those of you that know how popular that is, you have a really good understanding of just why this is an excellent way of using this system because people are interested in popular culture stuff like Harry Potter. Um, and so anyway, let's get into what PEP hands off is and then I'll just circle back and touch on some more of the different items and the reasons why you should even consider this. All right, so what is PEP hands off? This is a more automated way to perform PEP and it was modeled off of an inject effect. So this is available to all subscribers of PEP, but you do have to have inject to use this update. Now, as I mentioned, Tom Parkin emulated this based on a version of inject, which is called lazy inject. And the idea behind Lazy Inject was to perform Inject even if you didn't have your phone on you. And so in that effect, Lazy Inject, what you would do is you would borrow one spectator's phone and you would tell them that you're gonna do a search for an image that's gonna make sense in a moment. You'd put it face down on the table. You'd ask a second spectator for their phone. You'd go to Google and you would tell them that you're gonna to try to influence them. You would tell them to search for an animal, for instance. Maybe they would search for like a hippo and then you'd say, yep, that's exactly what I tried to influence you to search for. They might get a laugh out of that, but when they turn over the, uh, the first phone, they'll see that there is an image of a hippo, which proves that you influenced the second person 
long before they thought of the hippo. So that was the basic premise that Tom Parkin was emulating here. And so this is a way of performing PEP even if you don't have your phone on you. The beauty of it is that there is a lot of versatility here. So in the most basic form, you're going to take out your phone, you're gonna send an email to your spectator, and then they're gonna confirm that they got the email, then you're gonna put your phone down. There's various ways of going from here. There's a version where you touch your phone again. There are versions where you don't have to touch your phone at all anymore, but you're gonna have the spectator think of something, do a search for it on their phone, and then you can prove to them that you influence them and that they search for what you sent them long before they even thought of it. And the, the best part here is that the image that they're gonna see in the email is gonna be different from the image that they get when they do their search, which is just genius from Tom Park. And really, I have to give him a lot of credit for that. That was extremely clever and it's really strong. And probably the most diabolical way of performing this effect would be that you send an email to your spectator or your 50 spectators a week before your show. You tell them, don't open the email yet. It'll make more sense when you come to my show. When they get to the show, you have them confirm they have the email, but you tell them not to open it. You don't even have your phone on you. You bring somebody on stage. You have them take out their phone. You have them think of something. You tell them you're gonna to try to influence them. They do a search of it, and then you can prove right there in real time that you had influenced them and that you knew what they were gonna search for even a week ago when you sent that email to 50 different people. That is how strong this new version is. And you have complete control over the time of when the information gets sent to them. So it can be instantaneous. It can be, you know, however much time you want. So basically you could send out the email, you could do a whole bunch of different effects, and then later you can circle back to the prediction in the email and have them do the revelation and open it up and they'll see that you had predicted ahead of time what they were going to think of. So you can see there's so much versatility here and there's so much you can do with this. In fact, as I said, you don't even need to have your phone with you. If you're at work and you have a computer that you can send an email or you have a tablet or you have somebody else's device that you borrowed for 10 minutes just to send out the email, you could also do it that way as well if you want to. So again, Lots of versatility with this update. Now I'm gonna share with you guys a live performance of my own, and this is one of the earliest performances that I did of PEP Hands Off. And I have to tell you guys ahead of time that my friend who was watching these magic tricks had seen a lot of magic that day, which is why there's not this huge reaction from her. Um, but let me show you the performance and then we're gonna get back to it in a minute. And before we start, I wanted to ask you this. Did I ask you to specifically think of anything or collude with me in any way? No. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to send you an email, but it's going to be based on a category. So I want you to think of a category of your choice. Maybe like for instance, locations or, or hobbies or, or something like that. What category would you like to choose? Let's do food. Food. Okay. Excellent. So I'm going to send you this and this is in a way, uh, kind of like a, a way to influence you. So again, tell me it was S-I-K, what was the rest of your email address? Okay. Well, this way you get the email and it doesn't go to the wrong person. Okay, so I've sent you an email and just take a look and see that you got it, but don't open it yet. Got it. Okay, so you got an email from me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't open it. Great, okay. don't open it yet. And just to start, we're going to do a really quick mental exercise. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to have you think of something personal to you and try to send it to me mentally. In fact, let's go with a star sign, right? Astrological sign. In fact, you know what? I may know your star sign because I okay. know you pretty well. So you know what? Just think of a random star sign. Okay. So you got a random star sign in your mind? Yes. Imagine how you would spell it in front of you and imagine sending me those letters mentally. Okay. okay, look at me. I'm sensing an R. Yes. And an I. Yes. Now there's not an A, is there? I think there is. You think there is? Mm -hmm. an, an S? Yes. yes. Okay. And an E. Mm -mm. There's an E as well. Okay. Yes. So uh, I'm sensing that you're thinking of Aries. Correct. Am I right? Okay. There we go. Okay. So that was just a quick little exercise there. Um, so let me see your phone for a minute. Open up your phone and go to 
Go to your browser. Okay. And right. mm -hmm. okay, let's take a look at it for a second. And we're gonna try something else here. And what I'm gonna do here is, you remember a second ago that I asked you to think of you were gonna think of a category, right? All right? So here we are, we're at Google, and what I want you to do is I want you to do a search for any food that you like. In fact, make it one that you would think I wouldn't know. Not like your favorite food, but just think of a food that maybe you would think I wouldn't know, okay? okay. And I'll turn so I don't see what you write. All right. Okay, it searched. Okay, so you've searched for a food. Right? Mm -hmm. And what I want you to do is, I want you to think about first what kind of food this is, right? So, pull that close to your chest so I can't see anything right now. Look at me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fruit. Right? Am I right? Wait, don't say anything yet. It's a fruit because I tried to influence you to search for grapes. Yes. Did that work? Yes. Really? Yes. You it did. Is. Let's take a look. You, you searched for grape. Okay, there we go. You searched for grape. I was actually thinking, I was trying to get you to search for grapes, but you searched for grape, which is close enough, right? Yeah. Which is close enough. Now, you know what the craziest thing is? You may remember that a couple of minutes ago, I picked up my phone, and what I had done was this, was that I had told you to think of a category, and I sent you an email on my phone. Okay. Now, as you know, when I send you an email, there's no way that you can change, I can change what I sent to you. It's like, you know, and that was a way to try to influence you, even though you haven't opened it yet. So mm -hmm. open up the email and you can check it out and you can see what it says, what I sent to you earlier. It's definitely grapes. <laughs> see, that's why I was trying to get you to think of grapes and not just yeah. one grape. But you I think start... when I searched it, it just went to grape. Wow, so. okay. So you guys took a look at one of my earliest performances and I've learned quite a bit from road testing this and seeing different reactions from people. And I found now that the strongest way of performing this is to tell the spectator that I'm gonna to try to influence them up front. And I tell the spectator that I want them to think of a category, but don't tell me what it is. And then I tell them to think of something within that category to search for. And that way I can tell them in real time, when I turn around, I can immediately tell the person, you know, I was trying to get you to think of, like in this example of this uh, performance, I would say, you know, I was trying to get you to think of a fruit. Did it work? That will get a massive reaction. And what that does is that bridges the gap of disbelief because they're gonna make that mental jump to, oh wow, he did predict what I was going to think of somehow, you know, somehow. I don't know how, but he must have. Why? Because you didn't see their phone and they didn't tell you. Because when you immediately turn around and you tell them, you know, I was trying to get you to think of a fruit. How did I do? Did, did you think of a fruit? That's going to absolutely blow them away right there. And like I said, that just strengthens the prediction. It's why I think that that makes this email prediction type effect so much stronger. So I think that this update really takes um, the PEP effect together with inject and just elevates it to a whole nother level. So if I were to tell you guys what are the main reasons why I think that you should consider PEP, not just this update, but the fact that this is something that's being continually updated and you're going to get to profit from those updates because you're a subscriber as well as all of the personal attention that Tom Parkin has put to this. I think that it's a really win-win situation for you, especially if you're looking for like a confabulation or prediction type effect that you want to perform. There's a lot of extra little things that you can have added. Like if you wanna add an effect you, of your own that you wanna put in there or something, you know, for a very small cost, you can have that incorporated. I did mention about the Harry Potter effect um, that was part of the inject community and I wanted to perform that and let me show you guys what that looks like you can see here This is the image that's sent to the spectator and you have them think of a time and in this case the time is 11 o'clock So when they open their email, they're gonna be able to see there that sure enough the time that they thought of is is there in the image um, very strong effect um, and it plays really well. For those of you that are interested, if you want to listen to my performance of this, you can send me an email and I will share with you my performance of this effect. 
There are so many other extra things that are built into PEP for those of you that are interested, like other things that you can add on to it. You know, for a small charge, you can even have the prediction appear on your personal website if you want to as well. And there's all kinds of things that are already built into PEP for everyone, um, like the fail safes in case the internet fails on you. Very rare, but it will happen once in a blue moon. Like it's happened to me that I've been at work I perform PEP and the internet in the hospital is not the best. So for some reason it didn't go through, but when they open the email, they're going to see one of a number of different failures that you can have like as a backup there. And what I've done is I've just told the spectator, Oh, I don't, I don't know why I think what happened. Oh, you didn't get my email. Oh, let's just do it again. And I'll just repeat it. And then that's it. It'll work the second time. You don't have to worry about anything. So it's rare. It could happen. And it's nice that Tom Parkin has, thought of it and has these fail safes that are already built in. All right, so I got a couple of last minute curiosities and these are questions people ask me about PEP that I've gotten like over the last year or so. The first question that I get asked most often is what's the best way to direct your spectator to your inject Google site? And you guys saw my performance. I just used the rudimentary, I just typed it in on the spectator's phone. But if you're looking for a more elegant solution, I would recommend the Instant Card Magician. And I'll leave a link here in the corner where you guys can watch my review of the Instant Card Magician because when you're done performing that, your spectator will be automatically redirected to your inject Google page without you having to touch their phone whatsoever, which it's a nice elegant solution and it's a nice time delay from when you send them the prediction and when you do that effect because you had this huge delay of the actual instant card magician if you're looking for another solution i can also recommend an nfc tag or an nfc ring like this and several people have messaged me about this nfc ring um, i can actually send you a link to it if you're interested in it but you don't need a ring you could just use a tag that you keep in your pocket the important thing is this, is that when your spectator gives you their phone that's unlocked, all you're going to do apparently is just take the phone. You're going to tell them that you're going to um, go, you know, you're going to open up the browser and you want them to do a search and then keep it close to their body so you can't see it. And as you can see, I'm already where I need to be. I barely touch the phone whatsoever. And you can see how easy that is, which is why NFC tags are really diabolical. <laughs> and they're very useful in magic overall. Uh, some other things that people have messaged me about is do I have to give the app access to my private email account? And the answer is no, which is nice. You do not have to link your private email account to PEP. Um, so you don't have to worry about getting your identity stolen or your financial stolen or anything like that. Um, because the email that is sent to your spectator for all intents and purposes looks like it's coming from your email account, but it's really not. Um, so that's a good thing because if you're like me and you're kind of paranoid about that, then you don't have to worry about that because you're not granting any access to your private accounts, which is great. Um, if you're not tech savvy, you don't need to worry because there's virtually no configuration you have to do with PEP. Tom Parkin is going to do that for you so you don't have to worry about trying to integrate one app with the other. You're not going to have any of those issues at all. And the actual interface where the spectator can put in their email is very innocent looking. This is what it looks like. And for that reason, you'll be able to just hand out your phone to the spectator and just have them put in their email address in there. Um, and so it's going to look like you're sending them an email. So really all of the minor details have really been thought out really well. For those of you that are worried about languages, I think almost all languages are supported. So I think that's really nice. But again, if you have any specific questions, I would urge you just to reach out to Tom Park and he's very personable um, and he will help you with this. This type of effect is very hard to find something of this quality that you're gonna get that you're gonna be able to rely on. If you're like me, when you go and perform, you want it to work. And um, you don't want to be racking your brain um, trying to figure out how to use it. You want something that is a well-oiled machine like this, which is why I think that you should definitely take a look at it. If you're into prediction type of effects or premonition or confabulation type effects, I think you're really gonna like this a lot. 
if you are an existing Inject user, then it's a no-brainer. You really should consider subscribing to the service. There are very few Magic products out there that I would tell you guys that I give them like my personal stamp of approval on. And you guys know that I would not recommend something to you if I didn't personally believe in it myself, obviously. But this is one product that I definitely uh, personally believe in, which is why obviously I recommend it to you guys and why I'm doing this review update so you guys can see um, what subscribers are enjoying and why this is definitely something you should consider because it's been a year since I talked about it and I'm still using it now, even now a year later. So there's not many magic apps that you're gonna find yourself using, you know, a year, two, three, four years later. But these are magic apps that I'm really gonna be using for a long time just because of the strong reactions I get. The ease of use and the impossible nature of the effect is absolutely unfathomable to your spectator. They're never gonna have any clue how this is possible, and they're just gonna be completely amazed by it. Anyway, that's really what I wanted to tell you guys about this update. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them for me below. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I really hope this has been helpful to you, and I'll see you on the next review.